Everyone knows that part of the gospel where it says, What man of you that hath a hundred sheep, and if he shall lose one of them, doth he not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after that which was lost until he find it? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Have you ever wondered what the 99 sheep went through while their shepherd was away seeking that one lost sheep? Did they get along without the shepherd around? What were they supposed to be doing while he was away? Throughout salvation history, there have been many times when it seems that our Lord, the Good Shepherd, the Shepherd of Shepherds, went away for a spell. Many of the saints relate how they had to go through periods of darkness, times in the desert, when they felt spiritually dry and alone. Job in anguish cried out, I cry to thee, and thou hearest me not. I stand up, and thou dost not regard me. St. John of the Cross asked the Lord in the spiritual canticle that he penned, Where have you hidden? Is he not famous for the dark night of the soul? The dark night. David, King David, famously cried out in the Psalms, O God, my God, look upon me. Why hast thou forsaken me? As everyone knows, these words were spoken by our Lord himself as he lay dying on the cross. The fathers of the church come to our aid in answering these questions because they speak of the 99 sheep as being the angels left behind in heaven while the Son of God descended to earth to save the fallen race of Adam, the one lost sheep. The holy angels are saints. In other words, they enjoy the vision of God in heaven. They possess God. The number 99 indicates the great variety of angels, making up nine choirs in all, purely spiritual beings Each angel is a species unto itself. They're each unique in a different way. Whereas man is a single species himself. We differ only through our bodies. Our souls are of the same nature. Not so with angels. Each of their soul is different than the other. Thus, the reason the parable mentions the 99 as compared to the one lost sheep that can be recovered. Of importance to our reflection today and our mission that's come to you this week is this simple truth. When the angels choose something, they are fixed in that choice. They do not change their minds, nor can they change their minds. Being purely spiritual, when they make a decision, it's done, it's fixed, it's over with. Think of it like this. Angels travel at the speed of thought. That's why they're shown with wings. If they want to go to Rome, they simply think of Rome and they're there instantly. For us to go to Rome is a long, drawn-out affair, and so we have time to change our minds about our destination as we go along. We might choose to go someplace else or just remain where we are. This ability to change our course is due in part to the presence of our bodies. As long as we're in the body, we can change our minds. This is also why the church encourages us to make decisions as if we were angels. She wants us to fix our minds on our end as if we were already there, even though it takes us time to get there. Now, why so? Because once our bodies die, once our soul leaves our body, 
The choice we have made with them is fixed forever. We become like the angels, or sad to say, like the demons, unable to change our eternal destination. Good for some, bad for others. This is why the church has us make vows at the beginning of our journey so that we will remain faithful unto the end. We will not change our minds. Until death, we will remain faithful. These are, first and foremost, our baptismal vows, which we will renew in this mission. Some are encouraged to add on to these baptismal vows, other vows, vows of religion, poverty, chastity, and obedience. That's a second baptism. And still others, vows of marriage, holy marriage. All of them dedicated to keeping us on the right track. They're supposed to be angelically willed. Meaning unto the end. Until death. So when we're baptized, we are, as it were, counted among the angels. We possess God in sanctifying grace, which promises eternal life. It's the beginning of heaven. The baptized are supposed to be committed Catholics, set in their ways, unflinching in the preservation of the indwelling of God and grace and revealed truth. The faith does not change despite what people say today. The faith does not change. It's angelic. It's immutable. So our baptismal vows cry out, death before heresy, death before apostasy, death before sin. In this way, we see how we can be numbered among the ninety-nine. And we know from the saints and the whole history of the church, there are times when our Lord seems to leave the 99 in the desert in order to seek a poor lost soul or even a whole lost people or nation. Did not our Lord say in the gospel, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep and other sheep I have that are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Again, we ask, how do these chosen 99 get along without the good shepherd around? What are they supposed to be doing while he is away? Divine revelation tells us something about what others, numbered among the 99, have done before us. We look to divine revelation. This is what we find. When Moses, the shepherd of Israel, went up on the mountain to receive the law of God, the people down below, having taken vows, they promised to be good. They were left in the desert, literally. But after a spell, they began to question what had become of this Moses. Giving in to their foolish impatience, they soon made a golden calf for themselves, set up a false liturgy, and then sat down to eat and drink, after which they rose up to play. Hmm. No angels here. Don't you see? We need an angelic spirituality to prevent this from happening to us. Please come to this mission. That's what it's about, providing you with this angelic spirituality. In the parable of the faithful and unfaithful servants, the Lord and King seem to be delayed in his returning. As a result, many were weary, thinking, my Lord is long a coming. And they began to do what? They began to strike the men's servants and the maid servants and to eat and drink and be drunk. Hmm. No angelic spirituality here. We will present you one in this mission. Please come. When our Lord fell asleep in the boat, the disciples lost their confidence and courage and they panicked in the storm. They thought all was over with. 
pulled away a little, right? And they panicked. Another time when our Lord walked just a little ahead of them on his way up to Jerusalem, they argued amongst themselves as to who was the greatest. Again, at another time when he pulled away from them to pray on the mountain, they thought he was a ghost when he came to them on the water. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when he again withdrew a mere stone's throw away. After receiving Holy Communion at the first Mass, the Last Supper, to pray, they fell asleep. And perhaps what is most significant, when he pulled away from them in his saving passion in order to redeem the lost sheep of mankind, as we know well, they denied him and fled. Even after promising to suffer with him unto the end, Unto death. Hmm. No angelic spirituality here. As the baptized, we are of the 99. We're supposed to be committed Catholics, like our brethren, the angels, willing to keep our vows to the very end. Oh, how important it is then to be meditating frequently on our end, on death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Why? To keep alive that we have an end. To keep it real and make it clear and present in our minds and hearts. How important it is to be renewing our baptismal vows daily by making the sign of the cross using holy water. That's why the church has you do these things. But as we just heard, humans are not too good at imitating the angels. Would that we were. When the shepherd pulls away even a little, we easily end up eating and drinking out of due order, getting in all sorts of fights, struggling to get ahead of each other in order to be counted first, giving way to fear and despair, and even outright denials of the Lord and His Holy Church. We easily give way to making our own liturgy to make us feel good. Truth be told, these facts cry out that we do not like being left behind in the desert. We want to see and feel the triumphant church. We want to see and feel the presence of God in us and around us. We demand to be part of a visibly triumphant church already fully realized rather than a visible church that is deep in battle and suffering, even covered with wounds. Oh, how few are willing to live by faith, hope, and charity. What is more, we know there's something very troubling going on at this time. For those with eyes to see the church, the mystical body of Christ is going the way of her Lord. She's on her way to Calvary. Having been betrayed by her own, the human race, it appears, has once again become the lost sheep. With the good shepherd retracing his steps to Golgotha, once again to lay down his life and to save the human race, but this time it's going to be done in and through his mystical body, the church. That means you and me, folks. He, the head, the body, along with his most lovely and potent neck, the Blessed Virgin Mary, already filled the chalice to overflowing on that Friday we call good. They did their part. It is now time for the church to catch up and do the same. She's been filling the chalice all these centuries in her members in her martyrs, her confessors, her virgins. But it must be filled to overflowing. The lost sheep of our day are not cheap to recover. Perhaps we could be more specific. Our Lady has promised us that if Russia is consecrated to her immaculate heart, This very same Russia, this long lost sheep of the Roman Catholic fold, 
will return with wonderful effects ensuing. When Our Lady promises something, she means it, and she means it's going to be big. Think of the miracle of the sun. This will cause rejoicing of all the angels in heaven and those on earth. Thus, our Lord is once again going to Calvary in His church for the lost sheep, waiting to reclaim what is His by right. Meanwhile, we're seemingly left alone, right? There it is. And we need an angelic spirituality to do our part and not to fail. We need to do our part to avoid feeling neglected and abandoned. And those who possess this spirituality realize the goodness of being left behind, as mysterious as this may seem to us poor mortals. In other words, not only does the shepherd get the lost sheep back, Russia will come back to the fold as prophesied, but also the rest of the church is purified. The dead wood is cut away. And she's made ready for heavenly pastures. He pulls away so that our golden calves may be discovered and destroyed. And let me tell you, and you know this, we are discovering big golden calves in the church. And they're ugly. He pulls away so that our golden calves may be discovered and destroyed so that the faithful 99 can leave the desert behind and enter into the promised land. Perhaps you're feeling what it means to be counted among the 99. This mission is for you. Tempted to eat and drink out of due proportion? Tempted to despair and think God has given up on you or your family or your loved ones? You're not alone. Perhaps you're tempted to think the king is just a ghost, a phantom, a made-up shepherd and a made-up religion. We see many just taking it easy. Others getting in fights, dividing families, as well as friends by their foolish and sinful choices. Behaving like beasts. Some act like the deists. That's the Freemasons. Who claim that God's universe is like a watch. He wound it up and he let it go. He's not involved anymore. And all you Catholics are out of control thinking that He comes down on your altar. For this reason and for all these reasons, we must answer the question as to what the 99 are supposed to be doing while the Good Shepherd is away. Come to this mission and hear the answers. Come to this mission and embrace an angelic survival spirituality of the saints that is unto the end. Come and hear how the saints imitating the angels have traveled this road before us. What they did as individuals, we have to do as a whole people now, a whole flock. That's why it's so hard to live now. Because we got to do what they all did. We got to be saints. Come to this mission and learn how to be angelic, firm, committed, unwavering in your faith, committed to Almighty God and His Holy Catholic Church. At Fatima, Our Lady said that many souls are lost because they have no one to pray for them and suffer for them. God made things such that we cannot save ourselves. We cannot baptize ourselves. Not even a priest can give himself absolution. We are saved in a flock. We're saved in a family. In the company of the saints, we are saved, which is the church. Recall the friends of the paralytic carrying the paralytic to His Majesty. It was their faith that saved the sick man. St. Teresa of Jesus liked to say, in the company of the saints, we become saints. Thus, the return of the lost sheep has some connection to the 99 remaining faithful back at home. This is why these same angels rejoice when the lost sheep is finally saved. What I'm trying to say is that the lost sheep won't be saved 
without faithful 99 back there helping them. This means the 99 need to stop being selfish and do their part. The sooner they fulfill it, the sooner the Lord will return with the lost sheep and we can all rejoice. Please come to this mission and learn how to shorten the time lest we be numbered among those who sleep in the garden and then deny the church in her time of trial. We ask this simple question then. When the Good Shepherd comes back, will we be among those who hear Him say, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. Thank you for listening. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.